I've been in search and rescue for many, many years, and I have some crazy stories to tell you. This is going to be very long, so bear with me. I've seen a lot of strange and unexplained things during my time in search and rescue, but there are quite a few that really stand out. Keep in mind, these stories are just a small selection of the many strange occurrences that I've experienced over the years. One time, we were called out to look for a missing hiker who had last been seen by his friends on a particularly challenging trail. After several hours of searching, we found him about three miles off trail, totally terrified and out of his mind. When we asked him what happened, he couldn't really explain it. He said that he had just lost sight of the trail and suddenly felt like he was being pulled in different directions. He even claimed to have seen strange lights in the trees, hearing what he described were faint whispers all around him. Eventually, we got him back to safety, but after that, he refused to go hiking. In another case, we were searching for a lost child who had wandered away from her family's campsite. As we searched all throughout the night, we found her footprints leading away from the camp and into the forest. What was strange, however, was that her footprints seemed to suddenly stop and then start again about 20 feet away in a different direction, as if she had been picked up and placed back down. It was incredibly puzzling and unsettling. Eventually, we found the little girl huddled under a tree, crying and trembling. When we asked her what had happened, she said that a big shadow had picked her up and taken her there before disappearing. We never did find any clear explanation of her story or the strange footprints, but thankfully she was found safe. On a particularly eerie night, my team and I were out searching for a missing elderly man with dementia who had wandered away from his hiking group. As we moved through the dark, dense forest, we began to hear what sounded like distant laughter. But it was soft and childlike, not maniacal and evil like you would expect from some Hollywood movie. It also seemed to be all around us. It unnerved everyone, but we pressed on, trying our best to ignore it. We finally found the old man, who seemed very confused and oblivious to the unsettling laughter. With the man safely in tow, we quickly left the area, and the noise seemed to fade away. None of us could really ever explain the source of that. None of us were eager to go back there for future searches. Perhaps one of my strangest moments in my career happened during a search and rescue op for a young couple who had gone missing during a camping trip. They had last been seen by the lake, and all their belongings were still at the campsite. While searching the lake, we came across a surreal sight. Two boats floating aimlessly on the water, still tied together, as if the couple had just vanished into thin air. Well, after an extensive search, we eventually found the couple several miles away, deeply lost and frightened. They claimed that they had been lured away from their camp by a mysterious light that had seemed to almost hypnotize them, leading them deeper and deeper into the forest. They couldn't explain any more than that and seemed almost traumatized by the experience. Then there's the strangest, most chilling story I've ever had, at least to me. A fellow search and rescue officer had a harrowing experience while on a solo search for a missing woman in the remote wilderness. As he moved through the silent woods, he came across a small, perfectly circular clearing. In the center of this clearing was a single wooden chair facing away from him. As he approached, he noticed a woman sitting in the chair, perfectly still. Thinking he had found a deceased person, 
he cautiously called out to her. There was no response. He drew closer, and that's when he noticed the woman's face was completely skeletal. Nothing there, no flesh, just a blank, pale, expansive skull. Understandably, he panicked and fled the scene, radioing desperately for backup. He was a new ranger after all, still very green. When a team arrived to investigate, the woman or the woman's body and the chair had seemed to vanish. The missing woman was eventually found miles away, but had no recollection of ever encountering a skull-like figure. While there were multiple theories about the faceless woman, no one could offer a clear explanation for that bizarre and chilling encounter. I think most just chalked it up to his nerves. Now, those were just some of my own stories that really bothered me. I still have many more to share. In fact, a close colleague of mine who worked at Yellowstone for quite some time had their own stories to share. As I mentioned, I've talked with a close colleague who worked there for many years. Now, here are a few of my favorites that may interest you. There were part of a search party looking for a young man who had gone missing. And after several hours of no luck, they decided to take a break. They found a small clearing and had a rest. While chatting together and eating their lunch, they suddenly noticed that the ground seemed to be vibrating. They thought it was just their imagination, but it quickly became apparent to all of them that there was a strong, persistent pulsing coming from the ground. They decided to move away from the clearing and didn't stop until the vibrations ceased. But none of them could figure out what might have caused that phenomenon. To this day, there's been no explanation for the vibrating ground they experienced. Another time, my friend and their team were called to a remote area of the park where campers had reported strange howling sounds at night. They set up camp in the area, planning to stay for a few nights to investigate the source of the howling. On the first night, they indeed heard the bizarre sounds in the darkness. However, what was more peculiar was that the noises, they seemed to be coming from multiple directions and varying distances from their campsite. They started following one sound, trying to pinpoint the source, only to realize it was moving away from them. It almost seemed as if whatever it was making the noise wanted them to follow it deeper into the woods. Unsure of what might be out there, the team decided it was too risky to pursue the sounds further and returned to their campsite. The next day, they received a call about a separate incident and decided to leave the howls to remain a mystery. And in one especially odd case, my friend and his team were brought to examine a mysterious set of stairs that a hiker had reported in the woods. Now apparently, the stairs led to nowhere and appeared to be relatively new, without any signs of decay or weathering. He said it looked like they had been taken straight from a house and placed in the middle of the forest. When they reached the stairs themselves, they found them just as described. Feeling a sense of unease, they decided not to linger any longer than necessary and had marked the location on their map. A year later, when they returned to that area for an unrelated search, the stairs had vanished. On yet another occasion, my friend was investigating reports of bizarre and untimely animal mutilations in the park. These reports were unusual, since the mutilated animals appeared to have had their organs surgically removed, rather than being the work of predators. Dispelling their initial skepticism, they eventually found one of these carcasses themselves, a deer, with its organs removed and arranged in a strange pattern around the body. The cuts on the deer appeared to be clean and precise, unlike anything they'd seen before from a natural cause. Despite their extensive search of the area, 
they found no sign of who or what could have done such a thing to the deer, and the case remained unexplained. Perhaps their most frightening experiences that my Yellowstone colleague shared with me involved a call to a campground where, overnight, several campers disappeared. When they reached the site, they found that three tents were collapsed. It appeared that a struggle had taken place. They also noted the campfire had been hastily extinguished, as if someone had thrown water on it. In the middle of the campsite was a single, pristine white surgical glove, which seemed bizarrely out of place here in the wilderness. Upon a thorough search, they found no trace of the missing campers, nor any indication of where they might have gone. As with many of their other strange encounters, this one remained a mystery. Turns out that her boss, too, had a series of strange accounts and experiences from 1995 to 1999, before she retired. Now, according to my colleague, her boss had once been called to investigate the mysterious deaths of several birds found in one specific area of the park. What was strange about this incident was that all the birds seemed to have died from the same cause. Their wings appeared to be broken, and they had fallen from the sky. It was as if something had suddenly and violently struck them down while they were in flight. No signs of disease or other natural causes were identified, and the phenomenon, well, that was never explained. Another unsettling experience her boss recounted involved a group of campers who reported seeing strange lights in the sky over their campsite. When this boss was called in to investigate, she noted that not only the campers were visibly shaken, but that all of their electronic devices had ceased to work. Cell phones, GPS, and even flashlights. After checking the area, she couldn't find any evidence to explain the strange occurrence. However, there was this strange blue-like liquid or slime found along several of the trees there. She didn't go into much more detail. One of the most chilling stories from her boss was about a camper who claimed to have been awakened in the middle of the night by an eerie, ghostly figure. The camper described the figure as tall, a thin man, with no real discernible facial features other than glowing eyes. But his attire was like something out of the 1800s. He claimed the figure stood tall at the foot of his tent for several moments, then disappeared into the darkness. He said he felt nothing but malice. Upon investigation, they found no evidence of any other person in the vicinity. There were no known residents or park employees who even remotely matched this description in case someone was trying to pull an elaborate prank. Now, this left people feeling pretty uneasy for a long time. After all, there was really no logical explanation. Now, her boss once shared a particularly strange case from the late 90s. This involved a camper who had gone missing from his site without a trace. The man had left all of his belongings behind, except for his dog, which was also missing. Several days later, the same dog was found wandering alone deeper in the woods, seemingly unharmed, but visibly distressed. Despite the extensive search and rescue operation, the missing camper was never found. No explanation could be provided for his sudden disappearance. The final story her boss shared involved a young couple who, after spending a few days camping in the park, came to park rangers with a chilling account. They said that on their last night at the campsite, they heard whispers outside their tent but could not understand who or what was being said. As the night progressed, the whispers grew louder and more insistent, accompanied by scratching noises just outside the tent. Eventually, they mustered the courage to open their tent 
and found a small, ragged doll lying next to their fire pit. The doll, seemingly handmade with crude features and old, tattered clothing, seemed bizarrely out of place in the park. The couple had no idea where it came from. The park officials took the doll and searched for any other campers in the area who might be responsible for this. The couple left the park that day, visibly shaken by the incident, and the mysterious origin of the doll was never discovered. Now, shortly after this happened, several of these strange dolls began appearing randomly all over the park for the next six to seven weeks following. Some were more crude than others, but there was just something so unsettling about each one. The staff collected and stored them away, hoping to find some sort of explanation or even a link to these incidents. At the end of the seventh week, the dolls stopped appearing and no further incidents have occurred since. The stored dolls were eventually disposed of, considered to be an anomalous event in the park's history. Fortunately, I had the chance to speak to my colleague's ex-boss, who is now retired, and she told me a few other disturbing tales. For instance, back in July of 2000, she was assisting on a search and rescue op for a missing man who seemed to vanish without a trace. He was with his friends, and this was a classic case of their one minute gone the next. As the search went on for days, the team started to notice strange things happening around them. Equipment would go missing, only to reappear in bizarre locations, miles away from where they had last been left. Footprints would appear overnight in the search area, but none of them matched the shoes of any known staff member or volunteer. It was as if someone or something was watching them and playing games. On the fifth day of the search, the team came across a small cave deep within the woods. The cavern was filled with personal items belonging to the missing man, as well as articles of clothing and other belongings that seemed to have no connection to the case. It was believed that at one point or another, this was an old bear den. Most disturbingly, the cave walls were covered in strange symbols and writing, probably written with chalk, most likely, but they had remained there for a long time. And despite additional investigation, the meaning behind what was written on the rock was just remained a mystery. The missing man was never found. Another eerie incident her boss shared with me happened in the early 2000s, Rangers received multiple reports from visitors claiming to have witnessed a strange phenomenon in the sky. They described seeing the clouds suddenly parting in the shape of a perfect circle, revealing a bright light that slowly moved across the sky before vanishing. Several park employees also observed this strange event, but no explanation could be found. Officials quickly dismissed the incident as a weather anomaly, but many of those who witnessed the phenomenon believe they saw something more unnatural. Her ex-boss also told the disturbing story about an experienced hiker who vanished on a well-marked trail one afternoon. The man had been hiking alone, but had been in contact with his family via radio throughout the hike. At some point during the day, his transmissions became garbled and unintelligible before ceasing altogether. When the search team arrived on the scene, they found the man's backpack and radio, but he was nowhere to be found. After several days of fruitless searching, the operation was called off. The man was presumed dead. However, the following spring, the missing hiker suddenly reappeared in the park, alive and well. When questioned about his disappearance, he claimed to have no memory of the past several months and no idea how he had survived the harsh winter and fall in the wilderness. He showed no signs of injury or malnutrition and seemed genuinely perplexed 
about the entire ordeal of him missing for nearly seven months. Now, to this day, the story of his disappearance and miraculous survival remains such a mystery. There was one family that did seemingly vanish without a trace back in 2001. I forget their names, so forgive me. A mother, father, and their two sons completely vanished. It was the peak season for camping, and as an SAR officer, we usually saw a lot of families coming and going out of the park. This family, let's call them the Johnsons, arrived on a sunny day in July. They seemed like your typical, ordinary, happy family, looking forward to spending some quality time in the outdoors. They checked in at the Welcome Center, headed to their campsite, which was a little ways off the main path, but not too far away from the other campers. For the first few days, everything seemed normal. They were seen hiking, fishing, and they even rented a boat to spend a day on the lake. Other campers reported seeing them laughing and enjoying themselves, just like any other normal family on a vacation. And on the fourth day of their stay, everything changed. When a park ranger passed by their campsite early that morning, he noticed the family's tent and other belongings were still there. But the Johnsons were nowhere in sight. He assumed they'd gone for an early morning hike, so he made a mental note to check back later. Now, one thing to note here is their son, who was about 13 or 14 at the time, had a disability. It was believed he either had Down syndrome or autism, but the notes on that aren't exactly clear. When the ranger returned in the afternoon and saw the campsite was still empty, well, he started to feel a bit uneasy. He contacted the Welcome Center later in the afternoon to see if the family had checked out or maybe mentioned any plans or excursions, but there was no record of them leaving. At this point, in the evening, they initiated a missing persons search, as this kind of unexplained disappearance was highly unusual. SAR officers, rangers, and even other campers volunteered to join in, looking for this family. They conducted interviews with nearby campers and employees to gather as much intel as possible, but no one had seen or heard anything strange. It was as if the family had mysteriously disappeared. Days would turn into weeks, and despite our best efforts, there was no trace of the family. In a last-ditch attempt, we brought in the canine unit, hoping they could pick up on their scent. Now, surprisingly, the dogs were able to pick up on their trail. But it led us deeper into the park to a very remote and treacherous area. The trail ended at the edge of a steep cliff, overlooking a deep ravine. We searched the area thoroughly, but there was no indication at all that any of them had fallen or tried to climb down. It was as if they had just walked straight up to the edge of the cliff and vanished. Now days turned into weeks and eventually months. We had to accept the fact that the family was likely gone for good. Despite countless hours of searching, hundreds of people volunteering their time, including family and friends, and we never found a single clue of what happened to them. Now as years passed, we occasionally heard whispers among the rangers and other officers about that case wondering if maybe there was something more at play. Some believe they had stumbled upon one of the infamous staircases, while others speculated they'd encountered something more sinister. But for most of us, the technical explanations fell short when confronted with the reality that the entire family had simply vanished. Now later on, about nine months later, give or take, there was half a human skull found about nine miles away up a rocky incline that was extremely steep. Apparently, the DNA on that skull matched the DNA to the father, or so I was told. The chilling discovery left many of us with even more questions than answers. 
How had the father's skull ended up so far away from their last known location? And what about the rest of the family? Were they still out there somewhere, or had they met a similarly grim fate? This older woman, for the sake of this, will refer to her as Elsie. She was a well-known, experienced hiker and had visited numerous national parks across the Pacific Northwest. She was in her later 60s, loved to travel, was single, and had an incredible amount of energy and determination. She was one of those people who would just light up the room every time she entered in. And on this particular trip, Elsie had decided to explore the national park or at least one of the national parks in Idaho that she had never been to before. She was excited about this new adventure and could not wait to hit the trails. She had researched the park extensively, picking out her favorite trails and prepared her gear carefully. She well informed her family about her plans specifically and even invited a few of her friends to join her. But they were not up for such an intensive hike. Undeterred by this, Elsie set out alone, confident in her abilities and thrilled for the adventure that awaited. On the first day of her hike, Elsie followed a well-marked trail up into the mountains. As she hiked, she admired the breathtaking views and marveled at the beauty of the landscape around her. She spent hours taking in the sights, stopping to snap photos and rest when needed. Now, despite being alone, she didn't feel lonely as the beauty of nature kept her company, as she always said. Now, that night, Elsie set up camp in a small clearing near a running stream. She cooked herself dinner by a makeshift fire, gazing up at the stars as they began to appear in the sky. And one by one, they seemed to multiply until the entire sky sparkled like a diamond-studded blanket. The following morning, Elsie continued her hike deeper into the park, following a different trail that led her past rivers, through foliage, and over small hills. The trail, however, was less maintained than the previous days, and Elsie began noticing some strange phenomena. Unusual rock formations caught her eye, and quiet whispers of the wind to the trees seemed to carry voices speaking in hushed tones. Still, she pressed on, determined not to be spooked by her own imagination or potential paranoia. But as the day wore on, these strange occurrences did not stop or slow down. In fact, they were becoming more frequent and more unnerving. Elsie began to feel as though she was being watched, and fleeting shadows darted through the trees just beyond her peripheral vision, despite her unease. Elsie rationalized to herself that it must just be her imagination playing tricks on her due to her exhaustion from the hike. As nightfall approached, she decided to set up camp once more. However, she couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. The forest seemed too quiet, almost as if the creatures within were holding their very breath. Nevertheless, she still cooked dinner, huddled around her campfire, hoping its warmth and light would drive away any uneasiness she previously felt. Now that night, she struggled to sleep. Strange dreams plagued her, filled with indistinct figures and haunting whispers that she couldn't quite make out. When she finally awoke, her heart was pounding, her tent filled with an eerie pre-dawn light. Although she was tired and more anxious than before, she decided to continue her hike, hoping to reach a much more populated area of the park where she might feel safer. She packed up her camp quickly and set off, following a faint trail through the increasingly thick and tangled forest. Soon, the trail became nearly impossible to follow, and Elsie found herself tangled in a web of trees and underbrush. 
it was a disorienting environment that she first encountered the strange staircases. Elsie came across a set of stone stairs leading down into the shadowy depths. There was no sign or any building or reason for the stairs to be there. They seemed bizarrely out of place and their presence made her feel even more uneasy. But as she stared at the stairs, she felt an inexplicable pull toward them, as though they were calling to her. Despite her fears, she could not resist the temptation, and she slowly descended the stairs. Each step taken filled her with dread, and yet her curiosity drove her onward. As Elsie reached the bottom of the stairs, she found herself in a small, dimly lit cavern. The walls were covered in strange markings. The air was heavy with a very unnatural stillness. A sudden fear gripped hold of her, and she realized that she had made a grave mistake by following the call. She raced back up the stairs, her pulse pounding in her ears stumbling out into the woods. The once familiar surroundings she claimed now felt alien and hostile. But despite her best efforts, Elsie could not find her way back to the trail. Over the course of the next several days, her situation grew increasingly desperate. Panic set in as she wandered the never-ending forest, unable to find her way back to civilization. Her supplies began running critically low, and her strength began to wane. Now eventually, a search party was organized when Elsie's family had reported her missing. After several days of intensive searching, the rescuers had discovered her, exhausted and dehydrated, but ultimately alive. Had she gone another 24 hours, she would have died. She was trembling weakly clutching her backpack and her eyes were wide with terror. When questioned about her experience and what had happened to her, she struggled to recount her entire ordeal. Her words were fragmented, and she seemed to have trouble remembering specific details. The only thing she could repeat with certainty was that she had encountered an eerie, inexplicable staircase deep within the forest she was eventually able to recount her entire adventure. Her story became kind of a cautionary tale among the hikers and rangers in this small community, though many brushed off her story as the result of dehydration or hallucination and a vivid imagination. Those who've experienced similar phenomena know there is some truth to her words. Another young lady, who we'll call Sarah, a nature enthusiast who loved hiking and exploring the vast forests of North Carolina. She was 25, lived in a small town on the outskirts of a large national forest. She was also known by her friends and family to be quite adventurous, fearless, and independent. So, when she decided to embark on a solo camping trip in the park, nobody thought much of it. Sarah set out on her trip on a sunny Friday morning, carrying a backpack with supplies and her trusty camera, as she loved photography and loved nature and landscape photography. She told her family she would return Monday evening and set off following a well-known trail into the heart of the forest. As she'd hiked deeper, she had encountered a number of odd occurrences that she could not quite explain strange noises in the night, distant whispers, and faint crying. At one campsite, she found a perfectly arranged circle of stones and what appeared to be an old, dried blood stain. Despite these strange experiences, she pressed on, determined to enjoy her adventure and not let the fear get the better of her. On the morning of her third day, she decided to follow a smaller, less traveled trail that she discovered. Believing it would lead her to a hidden gem of the park, she eagerly set off. However, as she continued along the trail, she noticed that the scenery became increasingly strange. 
the trees begin appearing more twisted and gnarled, their branches casting eerie shadows on the forest floor. The atmosphere, it was growing heavy and oppressive, like she was being watched by unseen eyes. She soon came across the entrance to a deep ravine, with a narrow path leading down into the darkness. She hesitated for a moment, but was compelled to investigate where it led. As she descended into the ravine, the air grew colder and darker, and suddenly an unnatural fog had enveloped the entire area, making it much more difficult for Sarah to see more than only a few feet in front of her. She was scared, but continued to remind herself that she was going to be okay, even though an overwhelming sense of dread had washed over her. Yet, despite the fear, she felt inexplicably drawn to continue on. At the bottom of the ravine, she found a small den, or a cave, its entrance gaping like the mouth of some ancient slumbering beast. She hesitated, but something deep within her urged her to enter, as if guided by a force beyond her understanding. Now, the cave was filled with deep, impenetrable darkness. It seemed to swallow her flashlight's beam. As she ventured further, uh, what she described as an ethereal voice began to echo through the cavern, and she explained that she felt the presence of something unseen. Hours later, having navigated the tunnels, subdued her growing panic, she emerged from the cave into daylight. But the familiar North Carolina forest was gone. Instead, she found herself standing on the shores of a vast, fog-shrouded lake. Disoriented and frightened, she searched for a way back in the cave, believing it would lead her back to the way she came. However, the entrance or exit she had taken seemed to have mysteriously vanished, leaving her trapped in this unfamiliar place. She wandered the shores of this lake for days, and she encountered a strange phenomena that only added to her growing sense of fear. She swore she would see figures in the fog that would disappear when she tried to approach them. Sounds would echo across the water, and cries of an unknown animal throughout the trees. Even the air around her seemed charged with an unearthly energy. Now eventually, she stumbled upon a small, dialect-looking cabin nestled by the lake. Exhausted, she chose to lay there for the night. Now as soon as night fell, the cabin became alive with terrifying activity. Sarah recounted experiencing dark, shadowy figures moving past windows, strange voices whispering in the corners of the room, and even screams rang out from the depths of the forest around her. This cabin seemed like an old homestead many years ago, or just a place that had been left to rot in the woods. Terrified but determined, Sarah decided to confront the unseen forces and begin to speak out loud, asking for help for whatever was tormenting her. To her amazement, the activity ceased just as the first light of dawn peeked through the trees. For two more days, she remained by this cabin, attempting to communicate with whatever presence seemed to be controlling her experience. Each time she spoke, the fog would slowly part, revealing more of the mysterious landscape, until finally, as she made a heartfelt plea to be returned home, the fog lifted entirely. In its place stood the entrance to the cave that she had entered days before. Sarah, going back into the cavern and moving through its many tunnels, desperately hoping she would find her way back. When she finally emerged, the forest, its familiar sights and sounds, greeted her. She was able to make her way back after a few more days, and tearfully reunited with her family. They were shocked to learn that she had been gone for over a month, while Sarah insisted she had only been gone for six days in total. The events of her disappearance left her shaken but alive, 
and she recounted it with absolute truth, or so she stands by, to her family and friends. When she tried to retrace her steps later on to show officials where she'd gone, the cave or the ravine could not be found, and the trail leading to the ravine had actually vanished, swallowed up by the forest. She swears it was a well-worn game trail, but there was no such trail there. In time, Sarah would move on with her life and continue to her love for nature and photography, but she would never forget her experience the mystery of her disappearance and the strange realities she encountered in that fog-shrouded place continued to puzzle her and her family. Now, that particular story was shared with another good friend of mine who lives over in Georgia. But he has worked all around the parks from North Carolina, South Carolina, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, and, as of recently, began working in West Virginia. He does far more than just ranger services. He's done an extensive length of search and rescue operations, and now primarily deals with a lot of Forest Service admin type stuff. Now, this friend, I'll refer to him as Dennis, he told me about a time when he was more of a rookie, and he was doing some maintenance work on one of the longer trails that extended deeper into a less maintained part of the trail. This was in the early 90s, they were working with a group of about five other people, and they were all staying in a work cabin near the site for a few days, because that's how long it would take to complete the job. On the first night, they all sat around, talking about their work experiences. One of the older, more experienced rangers at the time, who had already been with the park service for many years at this point, began talking about the strange, ghostly whispering around a certain patch of trees. It was speculated that a lot of Native Americans had perished here, or that supposedly a burial mound was constructed and then completely demolished in the process of establishing the park. He said they'd come across several places in the park where, if you stood still and listened, you could hear what sounded like someone trying to beckon you further into the woods. Of course, most of them scoffed, saying it was probably just the wind blowing through the trees, but this older gentleman insisted it was different. Well, the next day on lunch break, a few of them decided to go investigate. This spot was roughly 15 minutes away from where they were working. So they walked into this dense section of trees, and they stopped to listen. Now, to their surprise, and he claims this still creeps him out to this day, but all four of them swear on what they heard. It sounded like a combination of Native Americans chanting or as if someone was trying to beckon them further in. The rest of them seemed scared and spooked and only stayed for a couple of moments. They quickly returned to the campsite, no longer talking about the event. Once they returned to the work site, that was it. Of course, the older, more experienced ranger who told them about it, he would not step foot in that area, for it spooked him too. They never told the others about all the other stuff that happened. Another strange story that this friend Dennis recalled was about a young camper who went missing on a solo hike in the early 2000s. Rangers and local search and rescue spent days searching for him but not a trace. The family and friends of this camper were devastated, and rightfully so. The search was eventually called off. Now, about six months goes by, and a group of hikers find a backpack, a very worn backpack, mind you, sitting by a large rock off the beaten path. Turns out it belonged to the missing camper, because inside the bag were his wallet keys, and a camera basically unscathed. The rangers decided to develop the photos to see if there were any clues as to what had happened to the young man. Remember, this was in the early 2000s, so many people were still using their Kodak disposable cameras. Everything seemed normal about the photos at first. Pictures of trees, the dirt trail, various crude landmarks. However, the last few photos revealed something truly disturbing. 
The second to last photo was a selfie of the camper, smiling and looking happy. But the final revealed his face twisted in fear, eyes wide with terror, and mouth open in what appeared to be a silent scream. In the blur of the background, something seemed strange and out of place. There seemed to be a white figure, a shape that did not resemble any natural formation. Now, further inspection of the surrounding area actually turned up a hip bone that was believed to belong to the missing hiker, but nothing was proved conclusive. Another story that stood out to me was an incident involving a group of campers who ventured deep into a remote area of a park in West Virginia. Now, this area was apparently known to have a number of strange occurrences, and there were rumors that it was actually haunted. There were even rangers at the time, this was in the 80s actually, where rangers would advise campers to avoid this area because there were so many complaints and issues. But this particular group were determined to explore it and ignored any warnings, dismissing all the stories as mere folklore and urban legend. Now, this friend relayed to me that a few days after the campers had set off, they received an emergency call late in the evening. The voice on the other end was panicked and claimed that they had stumbled upon a horrifying scene. A group of animals, including deer, birds, and even a dead black bear, were found mutilated and arranged in a horrifying fashion, with their entrails forming some kind of symbol. The campers were understandably terrified and demanded immediate assistance. A rescue team was then dispatched, but it took several hours for them to reach the group due to the remoteness of the location. What they discovered upon arrival was even more chilling than what had been described over the call. In addition to the gruesome display of animal carcasses, a crudely constructed totem of bones and sticks stood nearby, adorned with what appeared to be human hair. The campers were escorted back to safety, and an investigation was launched into the disturbing scene. Now, Dennis told me that some believed it to be the work of a cult, or a deranged individual with knowledge of the park's supposed activity. Others, however, spoke about the possibility of something lurking deeper in the depths of the forest, a malevolent force with an unknown purpose. This did launch an investigation into the area and its history. Some rangers reviewed old reports, spoke to local indigenous communities to gather any information they could. It turned out that there were legends going back centuries about a powerful entity residing in this area of the mountains. Various tribes shared stories of shapeshifters, spirits, and other malevolent beings that would curse those who trespassed on their territory. As the investigation continued, more strange occurrences began to happen. Rangers reported seeing creatures in the distance. Some even claimed to have been chased by humanoid figures with unnatural speed and agility. Several visitors who ventured near the area all reported hearing strange noises that reminded them of growling sounds. Now, despite the mounting evidence, there was no concrete conclusion that could ever be reached. Officials eventually decided to permanently close off the area to visitors, citing concerns for public safety. Now, to this day, Dennis tells me that every now and then, someone will come forward with a tale of an encounter with something strange from that area of the park. Now, the stories, he says, only serve to fuel the chilling rumors surrounding that one forbidden section. As the theories of what actually happened out there, they remain varied and speculative. Some believe there is indeed a cult operating within the park, using the remote location as the perfect cover to perform their dark rituals. Others are convinced there is a supernatural force at play, with some even suggesting 
that the park could be home to a portal that attracts malevolent spirits or entities from other dimensions. As stated, that section of the park was permanently closed off from the public in 1988. And since then, there have been fewer reports of strange accounts, although they never completely ceased. As far as Dennis knows, park officials have still not been able to definitively explain the chilling events that took place within that area. Now, to this day, there are still legends and mysteries surrounding it. Many of them even can be attributed to the Flatwoods Monster. A friend of Dennis, who is a retired ranger, worked in Bluestone National Park back in the 90s. Now, we'll call him James. Now, when he started working here, one of his primary responsibilities was patrolling the park at night, ensuring that all visitors had left the park by the mandated closing times. James was always a really brave guy, as Dennis described. He didn't really fear anything during his night patrol. This is a man who had nearly been killed by a grizzly bear up in Alaska. Now, right around this time, he began hearing strange, unstartling noises coming from the woods. He described them as howling sounds. Now, the first time James had heard this, he assumed they were probably from coyotes or maybe a pack of wild dogs. Not entirely unusual. However, as the howls persisted, he noted they began taking on an eerie, unnatural tone. Because they did not sound like any natural animal James had ever encountered during his time. It wasn't long before James's colleague also started hearing the unsettling howls during this time. After discussing and corroborating their stories, they began speculating that perhaps something more elusive was behind the noise, something or a species they had never seen before. One night, while out on patrol, James decided to investigate. He ventured further to the source, following the sounds until he reached an unmarked trail. It was there he made a gruesome discovery a freshly severed human arm. And from the looks of it, it had been eaten on and relatively fresh. James was horrified to see this, immediately contacting the authorities. A thorough investigation was conducted of the surrounding area, but the rest of the body or any evidence as to who the arm belonged to remained a mystery. The howls would continue and he could not shake this uneasy feeling that began to loom inside of him. One evening after this, James and another co-worker were driving through the park, and they spotted something by the road. As they approached, they realized it wasn't a wolf, a coyote, or a person, but some sort of grotesque-looking animal. What James would describe as the ugliest and largest coyote he's ever seen the other ranger actually suspected it was some unknown species of large North American hyena. The creature apparently stared back at them with menacing eyes, emitting this almost chirping growling noise, baring its teeth, and then quickly disappearing. They called for backup, but by the time a couple of other rangers arrived, there was nothing left. Over time, there had been apparently more reports come in about people seeing something similar, as well as an increase in missing child cases. That's about all for now. I'll have more stories to share with you at a later time. I hope your audience enjoys these. Thank you so much.